Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I am a clinically practicing doctor. I see patients every single day. Um, many of you have been through us, uh, have had consultations with us. And I want to talk to you about what happened just this past Friday. Friday, normal patient, patient day. Um, but it was an interesting day for me. I had three patients back to back to back. All three males, all three in their 50s or 60s. And all three relatively oblivious coming in to see me about how severe their health problems actually are. But all three inquisitive about a ketogenic way of life. And all three of them had our basic profile of blood work and testing done. We don't have to do the esoteric functional medicine doctor testing. We don't do some of the crazy levels. We just look at standard metabolic profile. So I can understand, are you diabetogenic? Are you obesogenic? Are you hyperinsulinemic or you're hyperglycemic? Which way does your pathway go? Which disease are you most likely to get? And the three patients that I'm talking about, back to back to back, all had, had a good relationship with their family doctors, had their standard CBC and lipids done, placed on a statin, your heart, you've got to protect your heart, da, 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 all the bullshit, standard bullshit. Lots of grains, lots of fruits, lots of uh, vegetables. Don't eat so much red meat. You know, the standard blah, blah, blah bullshit that makes us sick. First patient comes in, and he's the guy that I'm going to talk about. Uh, he's been a patient of mine for a little while. Um, I'm going to call him Sid. Uh, and this, this takes me back to my age. Anybody that is interested in rugby, anybody that, that knows uh, the New Zealand rugby team, the lesser team to the Springboks, um, knows of a scrum half when I was growing up called Sid Goings. And Sid Goings is this little guy, just an amazing scrum half. Hated him because he played for New Zealand, but just a brilliant rugby player. So I'm going to call this guy Sid after Sid Goings. But Sid came in to see me and he'd been on a somewhat of a carbohydrate, a low carbohydrate diet. He'd been dabbling with keto for a while. And uh, when he came to see me, we did basic blood work and we found, you know what? He has a diabetogenic history. He had diabetes, but his A1C was 5.8. Not, not too horrible. Uh, he was diabetic. Uh, weight, 6 foot 164 pounds. Not very heavy. Not very heavy. So higher A1C, probably higher before he started coming off the carbohydrates. And has a number of um, inflammatory conditions. Mostly uh, ligament and tendon uh, inflammation. Inflammation of the uh, ligaments and tendons and collagen of his body. And that's a red flag for me. That's a red flag for me. When you've got non-weight bearing joint disease, when you've got ligament and tendon injury, the red flag there is hyperglycemia and a variant form of diabetes. So we did his blood work. Now, he had a CAC score done some years ago and it was 322. Nobody thought anything of it. You're below 400, you're fine. And he came to see me and we did the blood work and I said, dude, you are suffering from the inflammatory consequences of diabetes. We may not have horrible blood sugars, we may never have horrible A1Cs, but you have the disease of sugar between your blood vessels and your cells. That's what your, the inflammation of your ligaments and tendons are. And every organ gets affected. The blood vessel lining gets affected. The infrastructure of every organ gets affected. That's the diabetogenic picture. It's not just about blood sugar. It's not just about endothelium. The, the big blood vessels, the arteries, all have a collagen construct, and the sugar is affecting that. This is something that's not very often talked about. So we said, listen, I know you're doing well, but we, we really ought to do another CAC saw to see what's happened. And reluctantly, um, Sid went off and got the new CAC score. And literally in the course of a couple of years, he'd gone from 322 to 730. Again, 730, not an awful number, but way up there relative to a zero. But that rapid rise was a concern. So I said, you know what? We need to get you to a cardiologist. Goes and sees the cardiologist, immediately... Uh, um, uh, does a stress test, stress test is positive, immediately does a cardiac cath. We've got to do some stents. Unable to do the stents because the disease was so severe. 
gets him to the hospital, does a triple bypass graft on his heart. And I saw him a few weeks after his coronary artery bypass graft in cabbage. And Sid is doing brilliantly well. His diet is good. His heart is good. It's, it's, his heart currently is as good as it's ever going to be for the rest of his life because of that cabbage. He's on a baby aspirin. He's not even on other blood thinners. I questioned that, but he was fine with that. And Sid would have died of a heart attack if we had not insisted on getting that CAC score. He was this close. Now, I know that the cardiologists love to, love to, oh, you were this close. You were a maker. I saved your life. But Sid was looking with that accelerated CAC score at a heart attack. And yet everybody blew him off. Not only was he not even able to be stented, he had to have a, have a bypass graft because they couldn't even stent him. But Sid's going to live long. Sid's going to do well because he's now in our protocol. He's scared enough that he's going to follow it. And he's a good guy. But nobody wanted to do this test. Nobody wanted to check that out. You know, folks, I've created a weekly cycle for myself where I have no calorie Mondays. I go from dinner Sunday night to dinner Tuesday night, 48 hours of no calories. And the purpose is to get into ketosis to restore my metabolic health. In order to get there quickly, on the early Monday morning, I will always go for a run, exercise. And the purpose there is to burn sugar off my liver. And as soon as I'm done with my run, I do a shot of Ketone IQ. This is a ketone uh, product that gets rapidly absorbed and transitions me very quickly into ketosis. Once the Ketone IQ is burnt off, I'm going to be using my own fat for the rest of that day. So I get into uh, nutritional ketosis much, much quicker, much deeper when I do that. And that has advantages and allows me to do a 48-hour fast and not have to do even more extended fasts. Try it. Do the experiment. If it works, use it. If it doesn't work, don't use it. But help yourself. Very next patient comes in. New patient. Saw him once before. Comes in with his blood work. Diabesogenic. Again, A1C below 6.5. Probably was above that before. Started on a dabbling with keto. Has a CAC score of 3,700. 3,700. Oblivious. Uh, uh, had a fight with his family doctor. Family doctor refused to get a CAC score. We had a back door and get him to pay, pay for it out of his own pocket. Because the family doctor refused to order that test. CAC score of 3,700. Has a stress test. Trest test is absolutely positive. And I talk to him tomorrow, the day after I talked to him, well, it was Friday, on Monday, he's going in to have his cath and his stents done. And hopefully he'll get stent. Hopefully he'll stents are adequate. But if we didn't do that at a score of 3,700, he would have been in the ER clutching his chest, having had a stroke, having had a heart attack, or worse still, he would have been dead and nobody would have known. Nobody would have known. And that pisses me off. Not only would they have not have known, but the arrogance of the primary care doctor to say, no, you don't need one. Why? Because he's fairly fit. He goes to the gym every day. He doesn't look like someone that can have a crappy CAC score. I insisted getting it because of the blood work, because of his history. And by the time I saw him, I didn't have any blood work. I just looked at his history and I said, dude, this is a baseline test. Didn't expect it to be that bad, but expected it to be not good. Don't let your family doctor say no to a CAC score. Third patient comes in, very next one. Same thing. New patient. Did a CAC score in the last time, seeing him back now. He had a CAC score of 1,100. Again, refused by his family doctor. Nothing wrong with you. You're fit. You're young. He's in his, I think he's 51. Oh, you're too young. It doesn't matter. Ro -ro, just drink less Coke. Keep exercising. We did the CAC score. He's 1,100. I sent him to his cardiologist. Positive stress test. Had a calf. Had three stents put in. Two stents. Sorry, two stents. Two stents put in for very tight narrowing. 
and a positive stress test. Would never have known, would never have known. And is now committed to this way of life on prevention. So those are three anecdotes. It's just, that's my Friday. God only knows what Monday is going to hold for me. That's what we do, folks. But your family doctor should be doing that. And you should be demanding of your family doctor that they put their damn statins in their back pocket and test you for the diabetogenic diseases. Whether they are vascular hyperglycemic issues, because not one of these patients, not one of these three men had an A1C over 6.5. But they had elevated, uh, C, uh, uh, um, elevated A1Cs. They had wildly elevated CAC scores. And all of them were diabetogenic. But they mitigated it through exercise. At least their blood sugars. But it didn't save them from the cardiovascular damage. And from the uh, uh, collagen damage. So please, please, please... Understand it is your health. Nobody cares. Nobody cares more than you should care. Get the testing done. And if you like what we do, leave comments down below. Throw us a buck, Patreon or preferably PayPal. Throw us a few bucks on our PayPal account. It all goes to keeping this educational process free. We have a 501c3. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Please, please, please be proactive about your own health.